Well, just like in the past video that we had, guys, where I talked about how much fun I'm having on Necromancer, I promised you guys a build video, and we have it here. We finally have all the pieces that I need. Bone Spear on the Necromancer, as we all know, is insanely strong, but with the Malignant Hearts, this build is absolutely insane. You're going to be really, really fast. You're going to be dishing out tons and tons of damage, and even at a low level, I'm managing to destroy monsters 23 levels higher than me like nothing we're cutting through them like a knife through butter so today we're going to bring you everything you need for the build the gear the skills and the paragon and break down exactly how to play this so let's get right into it so guys we have bone spear here we all know this build it is a crowd favorite fan favorite it is one of the main builds or has been for necromancer for a long time basically since release and now with the addition of the malignant hearts as you can see here the build is even stronger even after the nerf we are crushing monsters 23 levels higher than us so let's go in and break down these skills and talk about how to play the build so of course with bone spear guys we are doing bone uh splinters into acolyte bone splinters for the increased um crit strike chance which is very important then we're going to come down and we're going to grab unliving energy for more max essence because we want as much essence as possible to be able to spam bone spear now we imperfectly balanced is bugged right now uh hopefully this is going to be fixed in the patch in a couple days um but we can only put one point into here and once it actually becomes or gets fixed i'll show you where we're going to take the other two points out to put in this because you want imperfectly balanced to be maxed so hopefully they get this changed back fairly quickly then of course we max out bone spear into paranormal bone spear for the increased crit strike chance uh which is going to be awesome uh then we grab huge flesh lucky hit ha has a chance to spawn a corpse however i will say that i've tested it without this and you could take the points out of this and put it into death's embrace for even more damage up close and the damage less so it really just kind of depends if you necessarily want the addition of a corpse to drop so that way your corpse skills trigger faster or if you're dealing so much damage you could just do death's embrace because that'll create a corpse anyway so for the remainder of the gameplay we're going to swap to this because in the earlier gameplay you guys saw it with huge flesh uh now down into our corpse and max skills we're doing uh blood mist into ghastly blood mist which will give us a corpse uh this is our get out of jail free card we save this when we are need to become unstoppable we're super crowd controlled or we're on near death then we're taking corpse explosion into blighted corpse explosion now with this you don't actually need both of these at all because the damage over time shadow damage here isn't really doing anything however in my chest piece or excuse me in my pants piece i have 11 percent additional damage reduction from enemies that are affected by shadow damage over time so with our corpse explosion this gives us shadow dot damage so I'm just been playing with that for the extra damage reduction, which is actually really fun. And it gives, I mean, 11% is a lot. However, normally what I would do is I would just take the points, the two points out of this, and you could put them somewhere else. But right now, I really do like that addition. Then we're going to come down and take one point into Grim Harvest, and then three points into Fuel by Death for increased damage when we consume a corpse. So if you wanted to take the two points out of this just for the one corpse explosion, put them into Grim Harvest to generate more essence. However, you probably don't even need it. Then, of course, we come down to Curse Skills. We're taking the three points into Death's Embrace. Death's Reach for more damage against distant enemies. Three points into Amplified Damage. We deal 12% multiplicative damage against cursed enemies. Everything is going to be cursed in this build. And then we have a Decrepify as our curse into Aberrant Decrepify. Abhorrent. Aber aberrant. Aber abhor. Abhor. Abhorrent. On a lucky hit. Enemies damaged while uh, afflicted by the curse has a chance to reduce our active cooldowns. Now, because of our malignant hearts, we're not manually casting these. So the only cooldown is blood mist. So if you wanted to, you could swap this out and do horrid. And then you could instantly kill things at 10% less life. However, we're killing things so fast, it's not going to really matter. But you know what? We'll show this just for the video because we were doing uh, the Abhorrent. Now we're going to come down and do our other Corpse and Max skills. We have Corpse Tendrils here into Plagued. 
This is going to allow us to have some more vulnerability. It's one of the very few ways that we can actually get vulnerability on this build or in general for the Necromancer. The extra, we have four extra points here from our boots, which makes the cooldown on this even better. If you wanted to take the uh, additional points out of this as well, instead of putting them into Grim Harvest, you could actually put some more points into Corpse Tendrils to reduce that cooldown if you were manually casting this. Then, of course, we are going to be taking three bone skills with Serration for more crit chance. Compound Fracture for more damage, as well as Avulsion for more damage against vulnerable enemies. Then down to our ultimate skills, we have no alts. We're going to be taking three points into Inspiring Leader. While we are healthy, which is going to be all the times, so we're going to get 12% increased attack speed. Then we're taking three points in the standalone. We have no minions in this build, so we're going to have max damage reduction there. And then Memento Mori, sacrificing Skeletal Warriors and Mages, increases the bonus by 60% very very strong our key passive is always ossified essence for more damage now if you don't want inspiring leader because you feel like the attack speed really isn't going to make a difference you could again take the points out of this and you could put the points into something else you could do rapid you could do more points into corpse tendrils you could put points into uh let's see where is it you could put points back into hewed flesh um you have a lot of options here a lot of lot of options now the two points to put back into imperfectly balanced when we take them out okay initially that's what these two points are going to be we're going to take the two points out of here and put them into ossified so then if you really wanted to i would take points out of either one of these to put into something else if you really really needed it okay if you really wanted that corpse however you don't need it um or you drop inspiring leader you'll put the uh two points into imperfectly balanced and then you have one extra point to put somewhere if you really wanted it and you could just do one point that would be fine now into our gear because this build is really really good and we have some options here at our gear pieces so we have deathless visage this is really going to help us speed up this build okay we got this relatively early you can see it only requires level 60 we got this super super early in our build we're only level 76 we got this real early so Bone Spear leaves behind echoes as it travels and explodes. As you see, it leaves behind these little echoes here and they explode very strong. If you do not have this helmet, because this build does not require it, you could have a helmet in here and then I would put the, um, the basic skills in here and we would put another power in here. You have a lot of options in your defense ability uh, for this build. Next, we have plate or excuse me, might for damage reduction. Then we have splintering. Bone Spear's primary attacks makes enemies hit beyond the first vulnerable, and we do increase damage to them. Uh, then we have Disobedience for more armor. And then Wind Striker in our boots for Crit Strikes grant 16% move speed. We are always going to be critting. We're going to be, or not always, most of the time we're going to be critting. We're going to be very, very fast. So we got the 16% from that. We got 18 more percent on the boots then 24% more when we kill a, an elite for four seconds. And then on our amulet, we have another 24% move speed. We are very, very fast in this build and it makes the flow of this build feel really, really satisfying. So then we got Wind Striker there. In our, uh, our main hand, we have Serration. The Ossified Essence Key Passive also increases the crit strike damage of bone skills, very strong. Offhand, we'd have Sacrificial for more um, bonus to our sacrifice. Um, from our Book of the Dead. We have more bonus there. In our rings, we have Exposed Flesh. On a lucky hit, 10% chance to generate essence when hitting vulnerable enemies. This one is very, very strong. However, this is something that you're going to be able to replace later after the 8th. The main reason why is because the other power we have on our ring is Torment. Crit strikes with bone skills increase our re essence regeneration up to 30%. This is changing. This is going to change from 20 to 30% to 90 to 170%. So as we continue to crit, our regen is going to be insane. So when that happens, we can actually drop exposed flesh for, uh, in my opinion, is going to be accelerating. So when we crit, we have increased attack speed and we're going to be able to spam bone spears and kill things even quicker. And then in our amulet, we have chain of grasping veins, one of the main powers on here increased crit chance and more crit damage now our malignant hearts the raffle one we are going with the i think this is just the i can't remember what this one is called but it's the wrathful heart so 
Every 20 kills, we we cycle through. We get attack speed. Uh, Corn basics have a chance to fully restore our primary resource, which allows us to spam bone spears even more. And then the brutal uh, uh, part for the barrier isn't bad at all. It's really help us to stay alive, but we move so much and so much damage reduction, we're fine anyway. Our malignant heart is in this one is walking near a corpse automatically activates an equipped corpse skill every second. Dealing 30% reduced damage. However, we don't care about the damage, especially with corpse explosion. Or even blood mist. This is the best in slot. One of two best in slot uh, malignant hearts for this build. Or any build or most um, necromancer builds in this season. So what you're going to see in our gameplay is we automatically cast corpse tendrils and corpse explosion. As we just walk by them for free. Which allows us to never manually cast these. Which makes playing this build even better. Now, I will tell you, during my leveling process, when I did not have either one of these hearts, manually casting the build or for, for Corpse Explosion or Decrepify isn't bad. You pop Decrepify, it's instant. And then Corpse Tendrils, you just pop it once as you're moving around spamming. I only did Corpse Explosion after I killed everything to replenish any essence that I did not have. Our last Malignant Heart is by far the best one or one of them. It's a brutal heart. When you have zero enemies near me, I gain an aura that automatically curses enemies with Decrepify for 15 seconds. That's what you see here. It automatically does Decrepify. Now keep in mind, with these Malignant Hearts, when they cast these skills, they are casting the skills with any of the abilities that we have in here. So for example, when we have Corpse Explosion up to Blighted, that's why you're going to see the Blighted uh darkness pools if i take this away you're not going to see that so with this build you can play around with it but with the malignant hearts it's going to cast whatever we have on these um skill trees here okay let's showcase the build just a little bit longer and then we're going to go over the paragon board so you guys can see this the build is very simple we're just going to run around we're going to kill everything we're insanely fast you see the darkness pools you see how it auto cast tendrils and i'm not doing that I can literally one hand this build no problem you guys are going to see it right here we're just one handing this no problem and we're super super fast let's even kill this elite because they like to run spam no big deal oh let's queue make sure we don't die we got a one hand queue it though all right hand back up easy and we just destroy everything the build is so fast we cut through absolutely everything and what's better than doing that with Necromancer since I hated Necromancer for so long? Okay. So, you guys got a little bit of gameplay there. Let's uh, let's just do this room so you guys can see it real quick. And then you guys will really see some, some big power action here. We're going to move and just move around. Corpse Angels pulls them all in. And they all die. The build is an absolute powerhouse. Not only is Bone Spear very, very strong for leveling, but you're going to see it take you all the way to level 100. Now, let's go over the Paragon board because this is going to change a few times. So, we only have our first three boards and we don't even have them maxed out yet. However, the build is absolutely insane anyway. So, we are going into the starting uh, board. We're going to go up the right side here for Prime for more damage and max life. Although Necros start to begin to be a little tanky, we want max life. We want to be able to stay alive. We're taking every corresponding node. Our main node we're going to take here is Gravekeeper. We get increased damage, more armor, and more intelligence, and we do increased damage for each corpse. Okay, so before our corpse explosion goes off to consume it, corpse tendrils is going to go first because the malignant heart is left to right. So we get even more damage for each corpse, for every close corpse, and we're always moving, so this damage is always going to be maxed. Then we're going left side for knowledge. We're taking all the corresponding nodes. If you feel like you need more armor, or excuse me, more, more willpower, then we can definitely do that. However, this is a dex node, but you don't really need it. Knowledge for more damage intelligence. Right side, we're taking uh, preservation for armor and intelligence. In every corresponding node, again, if you want extra armor, you can take this one here. You don't even actually need this one. At least I feel like I don't need this one for the extra armor, so I'm going to put that point somewhere else. Into our second board, we are taking Bone Graft, our legendary node. This is going to be one of two early legendary nodes that we are getting. So hitting enemies with bone skills increases our damage and our max essence for eight seconds. And as fast as we spam, this is always going to be maxed out. It's glorious. Then we're taking uh, Entomb, crit strike chance with bone skills. We're taking all the corresponding nodes for those for even more crit strike damage. 
Up to the left here, we're taking Reinvigorate for Max Essence. More importantly, the Essence on Kill. Okay, and all the corresponding notes here for the uh, Essence on Kill or Max Essence. If you didn't want this extra for Max Essence, you could definitely take that away. However, it's really, really good. Then we're going to come up and take uh, Calcified or Calcified. 30% uh, more crit strike damage with bone skills and bone skill damage. Every corresponding node. We're going to come up in our legendary node. It's going to be exploit because we have everything being vulnerable. So more damage to that. This is almost level 15 and then we'll get the additional damage there. Then we're going to take Shaper of Bone for more bone skill damage with corresponding nodes. Then we're going to come down to our third board. Again, this is early end game. We'll have the full end game later in the season. We're going to come down and take Corrosive or Corrective. Uh, more crit strike damage. The potion healing is irrelevant. We just want the crit strike damage. All corresponding nodes. We don't need the potion healing. Then we come up and we grab Preservation for more armor and intelligence. Very, very strong. Our node of choice is Embiter. For even more damage while healthy and increased potion um, regeneration. That's why you see us have a 9,000 attack power. We already have a high attack power with Necromancers anyway, but this uh, Imbiter really takes it over the top. Then we're going to grab a Death Mark for more damage against injured enemies, which is really strong with corresponding nodes. And then we're going to come down and grab Scent of Death, which is our legendary node in the legendary board. When two corpses are nearby, we gain damage reduction. When none are by, we deal more damage. However, with how fast we kill things in this build, we're going to get the damage reduction first, which is actually really good for us because Necros as well as like Sorks and stuff are inherently uh, squishy. And with the current state of the game, with how much damage each class takes this is really important i'd rather have the damage reduction at first until it gets fixed and then the increased damage is just even better now eventually we're going to come down and we're going to take runin or a ruin for more damage against healthy enemies and the crit strike damage but until then this is the board guys it is very very strong where is that point that i want to take um we want to take maybe willpower here or even more armor uh that's a dex let's grab more dex here can we take something else here what is this? No more decks. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll just take another point and go down this way for the intelligence. Okay. So that is the build, guys. That is Bone Spear Necromancer with the Malignant Hearts. This build is absolutely insane. Uh, we got rubies in for our armor. And then we have the, uh, what is this? Emeralds for more crit strike damage. Our Book of the Dead, we sacrifice everything. We're sacrificing skirmishers for a crit strike chance. Our mages were sacrificing cold for increased damage to vulnerable enemies. And then our golems were sacrificing iron for increased crit strike damage. However, another option is increased attack speed from a bone golem if you feel like you need it. However, after I switched from this to um, iron golem, the damage is much better. So those are our sacrifice guys. This is Bone Spear Necromancer. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of this around YouTube or other channels. I really like this one. I can't wait to drop... Um, the exposed flesh and swap it to accelerate for even more attack speed because we crit so much and it's going to be awesome so i can't wait to do that um but yeah guys like the video comment down below tell me what you guys think for early end game build for bone spear subscribe if you guys are new and as always stay gaming i'll catch you guys in the next one peace